first game of rugby was in 1976, playing for the Newington 13 Seas uh, as a breakaway. Uh, and my last game at Newington was in 1981, playing for the first 15 as number eight. Well, I started obviously in year seven, and um, I think I was quite young for my year, so I was in the under 12s, and I started at five, eight and centre, mainly a centre. Um, I played in the under 12 Bs, a couple in the A's. I played uh, the next year, I played in A's and B's, I suppose all the way through to my senior year in 1970 uh, when I played in the first. Stephen Patrick, 5'8". Uh, I started playing rugby uh, before I came to Newington. Uh, joining Newington in Wyvern House, I played progressively through the age ranks. 13 A's, 14 A's, 15 A's, and first 15 I played 1959, 1960 and 1961. In those three years, I played on the left wing. Uh, we have very little evidence about how rugby started. We have no original records, but we do have a report in the 1902 issue of the New Newingtonian, uh, which includes uh, quotes from a, a newspaper report from 30 or more years before that and it talks about uh, what was going to be the first rugby match played by a school team in Australia and it was uh, the Newington team playing uh, the, the Sydney University team. Back when I was at school rugby was probably a little less uh, less structured in the sense there weren't systems and shapes that were being used to set up set up play. Um, it was more about building pressure, um, field position. It's probably a, an older style of game where there was, was more kicking. In our, in our last year, and um, we really tried to run the ball uh, a lot more than certainly the, the 91 and 92 team, uh, which was very much probably a 10-man rugby, uh, you know, kicking the ball until we hit the halfway line and then um, attack once we were inside, um, inside their half. Success on the field is one thing, but um actually being able to develop players and take players from, from one standard of playing first 15 and actually put them through the pathway to actually achieve at a higher level is, is sensational, you know, and to have guys like Lockie Turner or Ben Volavola who have, have made it in recent years is a great inspiration and I know there's plenty of other guys that are, that are in the pipeline on their way to being equally successful. Rugby to me was I was a complete sports nut when I was a young kid, so if I had a bat and a ball in my hand I was always happy. Uh, but it was always about mateship. Um, I still have friends from my junior rugby clubs in the St George area. Um, I have friends from obviously my rugby days at Newington and also lots of friends from my post school era when I played rugby at Gordon and they're all lifelong friends and the camaraderie is still as strong now as it was those many years ago. In 1976, uh, when I first arrived at Newington, I, uh, I wanted to play soccer. Uh, there was a policy at Newington at the time that in, in first form, or year seven, you couldn't play soccer, you had to play rugby. So there wasn't a soccer team. That was my major influence to get me uh, involved in, in rugby. And after one game, uh, I realised it was a fantastic game and I quite enjoyed it. And uh, that was the beginning. I never played soccer ever again. I just love footy. Uh, and of course, back in those days, there was no alternative in winter. You played rugby and that was it. And if you didn't play rugby, you were here on Saturday supporting the rugby team. Um, in regards to equipment, uh, there's probably just more specialist equipment that's designed now specifically for breakdown work or certain tackling techniques. Um, we had tackling bags. I remember for fitness purposes, we, <laughs> Reverend Syme used to bring bricks in and we'd all run around the school with bricks above our heads for pre-season training. And um, you know that was our circuit work compared to now having full-time strength and conditioning people that have uh, position-specific exercises to do. So um, that's probably the major, the major difference, the, the specialist knowledge that uh, boys here have today compared to what we had. Uh, the main highlights for me at Newington, certainly in the world of rugby, was in 1979 when I was plucked from the 16 A's, playing prop forward, playing breakaway in the first 15. I went on to win the GPS Premiership and I got selected in the GPS Second 15, which was, uh, was a great honour at that age. 
and uh, I still look back at that year as a bit of a blur, uh, but it, it went so quickly and it was quite an amazing experience. That was probably the highlight I'd say, as well as captaining the first 15 in 1981, which was a great year as well. I was lucky enough to play in the first 15 for the uh, Kings Newington Centenary of Schoolboy Rugby and we played in front of 10,000 people at Gowan Bray. Uh, at Kings, the All Blacks were in attendance on their way to South Africa. Um, it was a really tight game. We won it in the last two minutes of play in a really tight game. So that was a, you know, not just a school highlight for me, but it was probably a career highlight. It was, you know, it was just a wonderful experience. Uh, in that centenary game, I was lucky enough to uh, follow a kick through from my uh, halfback, Rob Griffiths. The ball bounced an inch inside the sideline, straight into my arms. Um, about 40 metres out, which I, you know, ran as fast as I could, obviously, to the trial line. So I was lucky enough to score the winning try uh, in the last couple of minutes. Unfortunately, the only downside to that was I got absolutely poleaxed in the last minute, and all my mates went to party on that night, and I stayed at home in bed watching TV with my mum and dad. So, <laughs> But it was worth it to win that game. It was a, um, a spectacular result for Newington and a highlight for all our team. Scoring the winning try in front of 10,000 people was pretty surreal, really. Um, you know, it was such a buzz for all of us. It was, um, it was just all of us together, you know, sort of ran in, jumped on each other, you know, back slapping, cheering. It was really, uh, even though it was special for me, it was just being part of that team at the time where everybody was just so ecstatic that we'd actually pulled it off. Look, the feeling of being inside a first 15 change room, first of all, is something that uh, is it's hard to compare to anything else. I've been lucky enough to be in um, Australian change rooms with schoolboys and under 21s, and the feeling inside a first 15 change room is more intense than a test match change room, um, which is which is fantastic. You're playing for something that you have enormous amount of pride in. You're playing in front of uh, at the school, so you're a role model, you're in front of your parents and your family and a whole range of supporters and that'll, that'll mean something. So when you walk down the tunnel and you see faces of boys that are at Wyvern or in Year 7 and some of your mates who you've been kicking around with for six years, um, it, it provides a whole range of different emotions. When I played here, the um the, we all of the first played on the Buchanan Oval and, and I think probably the greatest thrill any school footballer can have is to run out in your first 15 for the first time down the, down the tunnel of all the kids either side of you chanting the war cry that still you know, brings a chill to my spine it was just the most exhilarating feeling and um, even to this day it's probably the greatest thrill I had in my rugby career and uh, so that was like a big auditorium. All the cars would be parked around the outside of the oval. So all the parents who got here early had picnics set up um, all around the hills that the other schools were. So it was a real theatre um, of rugby there. And the Johnson, um, well, it, it was where you played your sort of other, other grades or other teams and events, but everything led to the big afternoon at three o'clock on, uh, on the Buchanan. It's a fantastic game and uh, when you can play a 15-man style of it like they do now, uh, it's very, very enjoyable. It's enjoyable to watch, it must be enjoyable to play. It's all about teamwork, I think. Um, you've got to depend on your mates to support you and you have to support them. It's all about stepping up to the plate with your mates and not letting each other down. And uh, you see all the great teams are very closely bonded, have a great personal relationship and really play hard for each other. Um, with all those other attributes of fitness and skills, they're all vitally important, but I don't think you can beat the chemistry of a team that wants to play together. Just enjoy it, do your best, support your teammate. That's what it's about. I think it's very, very essential at this age in your life, boys, to play a team game, be a team member. Have individual success, but support your mate.